Hello everyone. Let's analyze. So today we're going to talk about the absolute value and one of the most important results of the absolute value, the triangle inequality, which will be useful in proving many of the results we'll talk about in this course. Now, where does the name triangle inequality come from? Uh, triangles on a real line are, well, a little boring. But in n dimensions, the triangle inequality says that the sum of the length of two sides of a triangle is greater than or equal to the length of the other side. For real numbers, this is put this way. The absolute value of the sum is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values. So, of course, if we're going to prove that the triangle inequality is in fact true, we do have to define what is the absolute value. So, the absolute value is a function defined on any number, any real number, x, and it's defined in this way. If x is non-negative, x is its absolute value. If x is negative, then negative x is its absolute value. Of course, we should notice that this necessarily implies that the absolute value is a non-negative quantity. Okay. So let's take a look at this lemma. This lemma states that x is less than or equal to its absolute value, and negative x is less than or equal to its absolute value. Of course, I would hope that you would look at the result of this lemma and say, well, of course, that's true. But it's good practice to prove this carefully. Now, if we just think about it, we should notice immediately that if x is positive or negative, then one of those inequalities is strict and the other's equality. And if x is 0, then both of the inequalities are, in fact, equalities. So let's split this up into actually two cases. The case that x is positive or 0. In this case, we know that x is the absolute value, which implies rather trivially that x is less than or equal to the absolute value, because it's equal to. Now we also know that if x is greater than or equal to 0, then negative x is less than or equal to negative 0, which is 0. Right. These are both results from previous lemmas that we have proven. So, negative x is less than or equal to x, which is the absolute value of x, by transitivity of the less than relation. Therefore, negative x is less than or equal to the absolute value, because it's strictly less than or equal to. Now let's look at the second case, that x is negative. Now, in this case, we know that negative x is the absolute value of x, which implies rather trivially that negative x is ne less than or equal to the absolute value of x because it's actually equal to. And again, because x is negative, we know that negative negative x, which is x, is less than negative 0, which is 0, which is less than negative x, which is the absolute value of x. Therefore, x is less than the absolute value of x. So it's certainly less than or equal to the absolute value of x. So in both cases, we've proved that the result is true. Now, in the very first lecture, we proved that the square, or actually we discussed, we didn't prove anything, we discussed the square root of 2. We contemplated and pondered its existence. And we lamented those lost uh, who also pondered the same thing. So let's actually take a moment to define what a square root is. Okay. So if x is non-negative, then a is the square root of x if and only if a is also non-negative and a squared equals x. Now, let's observe here that a, the square root, must be non-negative, okay? So we do not say that negative 2 is the square root of 4, even though negative 2 squared equals 4, okay? 
by definition. Of course, that's the reason why if we solve the equation x squared minus 4 equals 0, we say x is equal to plus and minus the square root of 4. Okay. So now that we formally defined the square root and we proved uh, the previous lemma and defined the absolute value, we have the ingredients now to prove this result, which is also theorem point uh, or theorem 0 0.25 in your textbook. So the first result says that the product, the absolute value of the product is equal to the product of the absolute values. The second result says that if epsilon is greater than or equal to the absolute value, that this is true if and only if A is sandwiched between negative epsilon and epsilon. Of course, since the absolute value is non-negative, that implies that epsilon for this result must be non-negative if either result is true. Three is the triangle inequality. The sum of a, the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b is greater than or equal to the absolute value of the sum a plus b. Four is often referred to as the reverse triangle inequality. And it says the absolute value of the difference of absolute values is less than or equal to the absolute value of the difference. Okay, So let's go through and prove each result one by one. So to prove the first result, we're actually going to use the square root operation, uh, which we defined here. We're also going to use two results that you will prove in your homework. So for now, we will just uh, take them as true. Of course, they are. And you will prove that they're true. So in the homework, you'll prove that the absolute value of x is the square root of x squared. You'll also prove that the square root of x times y equals the square root of x times the square root of y. So we will assume that those two statements are true. So, from the first statement, the absolute value of a and b is equal to the square root of a b quantity squared. Of course, a b quantity squared is a b times a b, because I can reverse order or change order when I multiply. a b squared is a squared times b squared. In your homework, you'll show that the square root of x times y is the square root of x times the square root of a, y. So here we know that this is the square root of a squared times the square root of b squared, which is, again from your homework result, the absolute value of a times the absolute value of b. So we proved our result. Now result 2 is an if and only if statement. That means we have to prove both implications. So let's prove the left direction first. In other words, we're going to assume that A is sandwiched between epsilon and negative epsilon. And then prove that this necessarily means that the absolute value of A is less than or equal to epsilon. So notice our assumption, right? It's actually two inequalities. Right. The first one says negative epsilon is less than or equal to a. That means negative a is less than or equal to epsilon from one of the lemmas in the first set of notes. So let's consider the case when a is non-negative. In that case, the absolute value of a equals a, which is less than or equal to epsilon from assumption. Now, if a is negative, then the absolute value of a equals negative a, which is less than or equal to epsilon, right? which follows from the assumption. Therefore, for every number a, 
A is, when A is less than or equal to epsilon and greater than or equal to negative epsilon, we know that the absolute value of A must be less than or equal to epsilon. That's a typo here. That should be less than or equal to. Okay. Now for the right implication, let's assume that the absolute value of A is less than or equal to epsilon. Okay. Well, from the lemma at the top of these notes, we know that A is less than or equal to the absolute value of A, which by assumption is less than or equal to epsilon. Therefore, by transitivity, A is less than or equal to epsilon. We also have from the same lemma at the top of the notes, negative A is less than or equal to the absolute value of A, which is less than or equal to epsilon. Therefore, negative epsilon is less than or equal to A. So, we just concluded that if the absolute value of A is less than or equal to epsilon, then negative epsilon is less than or equal to A, which is less than or equal to epsilon. We've proven the second result. Now the third result, the triangle inequality, the big one. So let's start right, by using the result from the lemma at the top of these notes, which is A is always less than or equal to its absolute value, and B is always less than or equal to its absolute value. So let's start with this left column first. If A is less than or equal to its absolute value, then invariance under shift means A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B. Now let's go to the right. If B is less than or equal to the absolute value of B, then by invariance under shift, I can add the absolute value of A to both sides and retain my inequality relation. So I have a plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus B, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And we have our result. Or we have uh, this result, rather, that A plus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Now, we're going to repeat the same process for negative A and negative B. Right. From the lemma at the top of these notes, negative A is less than or equal to the absolute value of A. Negative B is less than or equal to the absolute value of B. In the left column, I can add negative B to both sides and retain inequality. And in the right column, I can add the absolute value of A to both sides and retain inequality. Put together, that means negative A minus B is less than or equal to the absolute value of A minus B, which is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. Therefore, negative A minus B, which equals negative A plus B, is less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. So, that means we've proven the triangle inequality. Well, how's that? Well, the absolute value of a plus b is either a plus b or negative a plus b. But for both cases, a plus b and negative a plus b, we have that both cases are less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Therefore, the absolute value of a plus b must always be less than or equal to the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And we've proven the triangle inequality, which we will likely cite many times in this course. Okay, now let's prove the fourth result, that the absolute value of the difference of the absolute values is less than or equal to the absolute value of the difference. Now, to show this result, we're going to do some adding by zeros, uh, but with a little more flair than just plus zero, and of course with purpose. 
the absolute value of a equals the absolute value of a minus b plus b. Why is that? Well, minus b plus b is by definition 0, and a plus 0 by definition of 0 is a. Now, if I apply the triangle inequality to this, I can split it up and say it's less than or equal to the absolute value of a minus b plus the absolute value of b. That implies that the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of the difference of a and b plus the absolute value of b. Now I can subtract from both sides the absolute value of b. Of course, if I subtract the absolute value of b from the absolute value of b on the right side, I get that the right-hand side becomes the absolute value of the difference. So now we know that the difference of the absolute values is less than or equal to the absolute value of the differences. Of course, we're not done. Right? We're not done until we can wrap this left-hand side with an absolute value itself. But it was a nice trick. So nice, let's do it twice. The absolute value of b equals the absolute value of b minus a plus a. Right? The minus a plus a, that's our way of adding zero, right? the additive identity. Applying the triangle inequality to that means that's less than or equal to the absolute value of b minus a plus the absolute value of a. Okay. So now let's take this relation and from each side subtract the absolute value of a. So the absolute value of b minus the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of b minus a plus absolute value of a minus the absolute value of a, which of course these two terms sum to zero and I get that the difference of the absolute value of b and the absolute value of a is less than or equal to the absolute value of the difference. Now notice that my right hand sides of both these expressions right, are equal. Right? Well, why is that? Well, the absolute value of b minus a is the absolute value of negative 1 times the difference a minus b. Right? But from the first result, this is equal to the absolute value of negative 1 times the absolute value of a minus b. And the absolute value of negative 1 is negative negative 1, which is 1, which is the multiplicative identity. Therefore, I have that the absolute value of b minus a equals the absolute value of a minus b. Now let's observe the left hand side here and here. Okay. This is negative 1 times this because if I distribute the negative I would get negative absolute value of a minus minus or plus the absolute value of b. And that's expressed in this statement here. So since the absolute value of the difference of absolute values is either absolute value of a minus absolute value of b or negative absolute value of a minus absolute value of b, and both of those are less than the absolute value of a minus b, we can conclude our result. The absolute value of the absolute value of a minus the absolute value of b is less than or equal to the absolute value of the difference between a and b. And that proves our result. That's it for this lecture, and I will see you next time.